Hi everyone. I often get asked what's going on behind the scenes. Sometimes my videos are a little few and far between and that's just because there's so many things going on right now and I do plan on releasing more videos. So uh, things are kind of calming down here at the lab. There are uh, many things that are happening behind the scenes that I really don't talk about and I'll share some of those things with you today. So give you a better idea of you know why you aren't seeing so many videos. So first of all, I mentioned this before in, in my other shop talk videos, is that there are a lot of power outages here and it's aggravating actually. We're right at the end of the hydro run. So basically I can, you know, go outside and go and, uh, you know, blow on the trees and, you know, our power will go. It's almost that bad. So getting really tired of the 15 kilowatt generator trying to support the geothermal system here. Uh, the, the geothermal system has a very large compressor in it. And um, it's one of the underground ones with the, you know, the lines underground and it pulls the heat out of the earth, right? So uh, big pumps on the wall, big compressor, big fan, all this kind of stuff. So when the hydro is running normally and the thing kicks on, uh, what ends up happening is the lights dim right down and they come right up again. Well, uh, the 15 kilowatt generator doesn't like that at all. So it's basically, you know how a governor works on an engine, right? So the more load you pull, the more the governor opens to maintain, you know, either 1800 or 3600 RPM on a 60 cycle system, depending whether it's a two or four pole generator, right? So in this case, the, uh, I don't know if you saw the lights dim there, that was the system coming on and I'm a long ways away from the lab. So that is, this is the shop and that's the geothermal system. So uh, in the shop, the shop actually has natural gas heating. So <laughs> there was the bog. I don't know if you saw that, but the lights went down and came back up here again. So the small generator bottom line doesn't like that. So I needed to get something a little bigger and that's where this thing came in. And uh, the ratings on this thing are kind of crazy, but you know, I would say, you know, they put a very large generator on somewhat of a smaller motor. So basically the thing is just a break so I'll show you that here in a moment. So that thing has to be installed. And I guess you could say I've had it for five months and I haven't even looked at this thing because I just haven't had any time. So it's been sitting out here and you know we've had power outages and I'm still using that stupid 15 kilowatt thing that uh, basically the throttle opens up wide and it starves for fuel for a second. I guess it's such a quick snap when that thing loads the generator that you know the lights dim right out and come back on again and we get all this crazy stuff. So I don't want to use that thing anymore. So it's kind of overloading it, right? So uh, when, when the geothermal system is on and running, it's fine. You know, it's just that initial start really causes a lot of issues. So I don't want to use that anymore. I want to use this thing and I'll show you this. Now I'm going to make a load bank for this thing to test it out as well. So I may share that on this channel. In fact, I most likely will. So you'll, uh, see a whole bunch of heaters hooked up to this thing and uh, loading it down. So <laughs> I'll share the, share the little build for that. You'll probably find that interesting. Probably load it up to I don't know, 30 or 40 kilowatts anyways, just to see how well the thing holds up. So that's what's going on here. I'll show you the generator and I'll show you some of the other things that are going on. Uh, as I mentioned before, and many of you know that are on this channel, I have a very large electronics Patreon course going on and I release many of my designs and uh, inventions and all sorts of crazy things there. And I've released another thing. So I've been putting a lot of time into that. So that's been taking up a lot of my time as well. And I also have started a forum that hasn't been announced at all. So uh, it's already got over 500 members there and it's just a really quiet thing. So really kind of a, you know, just a quiet mention. So uh, that's taking up time. There's so many things happening. So I'll fill you in on some of the things and I'll show you around what's going on here. And uh, you'll get to see a little bit of, uh, you know, why my videos are so few and far between lately. But I do promise it is slowing down. I'm, uh, as you know, I have an assistant now and uh, things are easing up because a lot of the load in my end is being taken up by the assistant, uh, plural. And uh, it, uh, you know, so you'll start to see more videos popping up and I'll do shorter videos as well to just, you know, get more footage up. But anyways, let's take a look at this thing. I'll show you around this thing and some of the other crazy projects that are going on. And uh, yeah, filling in on my life behind the scenes, I guess. All right, so here's a closer look at the generator. Again, pardon the movement here. This camera is pretty heavy. So, so for those of you that, uh, 
don't know if you can read that. I'll move this around here and get that down there. Right about there, so you can read the tag. So that's what the generator says, is continuous duty. Standby duty isn't even stamped. 401 kilowatt generator on the back of this thing. And yes, it's pretty big. It may be a little bit deceiving in the actual video itself, but it is a pretty big gen. Now, there's no way that this motor is gonna be able to bring it to that. So I don't know what they were thinking. Maybe it's just lots of built-in redundancy. I would think so. So, you know, it is a pretty large Kubota unit, but uh, there's no way this thing isn't even turbocharged or anything. It's just naturally aspirated. So anyways, very, very large unit. And, uh, you know, I imagine it'll at least give me what I need to keep the system going here. I think, you know, just even 30K would be comfortable. So uh, lots and lots of, so basically that thing is a brake. Let's look at it like that, you know. If I was to short the leads, it would stall the motor. I'd get a mighty big flash and uh, nothing would happen because it just doesn't have enough power to hurt it. I think that's what they intended, probably. So if uh, any of you out there are familiar with this particular unit, you can, uh, you can leave more information down below. But at any rate, uh, it does run and uh, of course it's been moved. It's these little movable rollable stands are doing everything they can. They're actually kind of collapsing, doing everything they can to hold this thing up. And um, yeah, it's just a really, really big heavy unit. There we go, the shop fan is off. So that's much, much nicer. So this is one of the projects here. I've uh, you know, got to get an exhaust system plumbed and do all this kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, lots of work to do with this. As I say, you know, this has been here for an incredibly long time and uh, just, you know, no time to do anything. So it just sits and we've had power outages in between. And of course that's pretty, pretty aggravating. So anyways, there it is, fuel tank down there. And there's another big one on the other side. So uh, of course it is a diesel unit and all that. So uh, if I uh, fire the thing up, and uh, you know, I'm gonna change all the filters and you know, install a tank and everything like that. Uh, maybe I'll bring you along for the ride as I fire this thing up for the first time on this end. Doing a tune-up on the forklift. That's about the cutest little four-cylinder you're ever gonna see. I can almost stretch my hand and touch the front and the back of the block at the same time. Well, maybe two of my hands, but cute little four-cylinder. Almost as cute as the Ford V860, something like that but uh, only half of it. Anyways, neat little cast iron block. And uh, I'll give you an example of before and after the tune-up. So a Mr. Carlson's lab tune-up, before and after. All right, before the tune-up. Not too bad. That's okay. Okay, I'll do that tune-up. All right, after the tune-up. Turn everything back on again. Ignition. I'll tap the ignition. That's the way it should be. Still moving a lot of equipment into the shop here, and as you can see, it's a terrible mess. So that's why I haven't done any videos out here lately. So you can see I've added shelving back there, and I've added more shelving here, and there's more shelving behind that. And I've added shelving here, which is very quickly filling up. And on top, I've moved in a whole bunch of vacuum tubes up here. So. For those of you that have never been in here before, this is all vacuum tubes all the way down this row and all the way around the corner. Again, if you're doing repairs and restorations on antique equipment, you definitely need the stock to keep doing that. And of course, I need the stock to keep sharing these videos. So that's why all of that stuff is here. Many, many restorations here in queue, up on top and up on top over there as well. And I'll be sharing all of those in the future. So lots and lots of footage here for everybody. Behind the scenes at the lab here, as you can see, there are a lot more projects waiting for repair or restoration. 
I'm planning on adding some more shelving from there over to this shelf here. Where I do most of my videoing, by the way, is just around the corner and in that area over there. So moving, again, a lot of stuff from the old lab to the new lab and uh, just trying to make it all fit in this new area here and, of course, putting things in queue. This is the current mess behind the scenes as I'm moving things around here. So as most of you know, that's the bench where I do most of the actual video work. And here's what it looks like currently inside the lab right now. So again, moving a lot of stuff from the old lab and trying to make everything work in this new lab area. Again, everything is a real big mess because I'm just moving things around right now. Another reason that, of course, you haven't seen too many videos out of me lately. So just trying to get everything happening, right? And then of course, once that's all here, which I'm getting close, I will commence videoing again and I'll be spending quite a bit more time at the bench over here sharing more videos with all of you. So that's just a quick rundown of what's going on behind the scenes. I have other areas that are full of equipment as well, but they're so kind of congested at this moment because I'm moving things. Uh, I'll save that for another video. These are rooms that you have never even seen before. So once everything is somewhat organized, I'll take you for a tour through that and uh, some other areas as well, and that's all coming up. So I have another neat repair coming up here very shortly as well, so definitely stay tuned for that. I don't think I've ever really shown or talked about my audio testing area. So in the future, I'll do a dedicated video and show you exactly what I do in here and the different pieces of equipment involved. All right, let's see what's on television. Thanks for stopping by the lab today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you are enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. There'll be a lot of repairs and restorations and teardowns and all of that great stuff on this channel. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that and definitely tap that bell symbol. That way you'll be notified as soon as I post a brand new video. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll also pin the link at the top of the comments section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.